The decision is the cause, the effect is the ways and the means. But most people have this backwards and it keeps them playing at the same level over and over and over again. Before we dive into our content today, I want to let you know about the 2021 Spirit of Wealth Mastermind and Masterclass. It's enrolling now and we have a few spots left. If you're ready to quantum leap your income and make 2021 your best year yet, I would love to see you there. Go to theunstoppablewoman.com slash spirit to find out about the program. Then book a call with me to discuss whether this is your very next best move. Time is of the essence and 2021 is right around the corner. So let's do this now. In this episode of the Unstoppable Woman podcast, we are going to dive into decision making again and give you some tools for making great decisions for yourself. We're going to explore how to know if you're making a no decision out of logic or out of fear and what that means. We're also going to discuss whether you're making a yes decision from a place of desire or fear because fear drives you into confusion, and it works on both the yes side and the no side. The drive behind the decision, or your come from, if you will, is very important. It clarifies everything for you. And then if you use your intellect at that point, once you get this clarity, if you use your intellect to decide in favor of truth, meaning in favor of what the universal laws explain and say, If you work in alignment with those laws, so you decide in in favor of what would be in alignment with those laws, you will grow and you will grow quickly. Your business will grow, your cash flow will grow, your capacity will grow, your life will get better and better in this upward spiral with very concrete results that you can point to and go, wow. That was a direct result of stepping into what I want from a place of desire rather than being driven by fear or being held back by fear. It requires new decisions on your part and you must learn how to differentiate between something that is scary new from a place of newness, right? It's new to you. You're you're conquering, uh, you're being courageous and you're conquering a a next level challenge for yourself, meaning you're moving forward based on a decision that's new for you. And when you are being held back and really constrained and limited, you must, must, must keep moving forward. And this requires that you decide, which is a type of action, decision is a type of action based on truth, not on programming, meaning not on your old programming your subconscious programming, the the identity, the self-image, the beliefs that you hold in your subconscious mind. Now, some of you may have heard me speak on this before. For some of you, this might be new information. So I'm going to give you a little quick um, synopsis of how this works. You have a self-image and that is held in your subconscious mind. This is what you are programmed to live out over and over and over again. And it determines the results that you get. It determines how you see every decision that you need to make. It determines every pers- all, your entire perspective on every experience that you have. And this affects how you go about growing your life, your business, your career, all of that. And this subconscious programming got programmed when you were very young, when you didn't have the current level of consciousness, the, the, the intellect to reject ideas that you don't agree with. You just accepted them and you built an entire identity based on them. And this identity says, I need to do X, Y, and Z and B, X, Y, and Z or PDQ to continue to survive, not to have a fabulous life, not to have the, the goals and dreams that you desire come true, not to live delighted, but to survive. So your subconscious mind 
it's, it's one goal is to keep you alive, to, to make sure that you survive. It doesn't care if you're miserable and surviving. It doesn't care if you're frustrated in surviving. It doesn't care if you're resentful and surviving. It doesn't care if you're not living up to your potential as long as you survived. And this is what creates a life of regret for people. They want so much more for themselves. You might want so much more for yourself and you know you are capable of it, but there's this invisible barrier. You keep getting in your own way. You keep self-sabotaging and it has everything to do with the self-image that you're holding for yourself in your, in your subconscious mind. And just a really quick thing, if you are interested in changing this, fundamentally so that you can always achieve the results that you want faster than you ever thought possible. I really, truly encourage you to go look at the Spirit of Wealth Mastermind and Masterclass for 2021 and book a call with me to discuss whether it's the right thing for you, because this is where we are going to work on changing that self-image so that you can achieve your goals faster than you ever thought possible. So go to the unstoppablewoman.com slash spirit for that. So here you are, you have this old identity that's programmed into you. It's causing you to see everything through the lens of that old identity. And it's keeping you playing at the same level. And it's causing you to see the decision that you want to make from a place of, am I going to survive? That is a fear Based place. It's a place based on, oh my God, I might lose something. Now, I'm not saying that your survival isn't important. Of course it is. Of course it is. But your subconscious, and here's the rub, only thinks you will survive based on past experience. And yet everything you want, all your goals and dreams require you to be more and do more, which requires you to to change and it requires you to make different decisions and it requires you to show up differently. And your subconscious doesn't think you are going to survive showing up differently because you haven't yet already. And this is the rub. It keeps you playing at the same level again and again and again. So you must make a decision that's based in truth. And this is where the universal laws come in. You must learn the universal laws and learn how to apply them to every aspect of your life, including decision-making. And here's a, a key piece to this. You must continue to decide in favor of truth again and again and again until it becomes a habit and who you are. It doesn't stop with one decision. Okay. Let me repeat that. It doesn't stop with one decision or one choice. It must become who you are. You are someone who makes decisions based on truth, universal law, and based on desire that that's embedded in, in my teachings on universal law. You'll learn all about that, but you have to come from a place of desire and more life of growth. This doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen very, very quickly if you keep deciding in favor of truth and keep holding yourself to a higher standard of living into this truth day after day after day, moment by moment, decision by decision, which means you are continually going to higher levels of awareness. When you keep in growth, when you keep making decisions that cause you to grow and not backslide into your old programming, your old belief structure that is getting you your current results, which may be good, right? Good enough, nothing to complain about or better than before those kinds of results, but not getting you the results that you actually want. Here's the thing. Good enough is not acceptable. That is a key phrase, a key thought, a key way that you know that you are afraid to grow, that you're afraid to to go into more life. Good enough is is not a growth mindset. Good enough is compromising on your potential. Good enough is not living out your capacity, your potential, your purpose. It's dying with the music still in you. So anytime you 
compromise in your mind or out loud in a that's good enough or it's better than it was before. At least I should be happy with that. Remember, you're allowed to keep having more. You're allowed to have a life that gets better and better. Think about that. Where did you learn that you need to compromise and accept what's good enough? Where did you learn that? And how is that actually serving you? What is the direct result about that? Of that? You really want to look at that. So this is a great segue into how to know if you're making a decision based on logic or fear. Because anytime you couch your decision in the preamble of good enough, nothing to complain about, um, it's better than before, I'm doing so great now compared to before, we don't want to cut you down at the knees and say that's not true. Yeah, that is true. That's fantastic. But if you're using it as a reason to stop, a reason not to decide in favor of your growth, then that is fear speaking. These are the words and phrases that let you know that your subconscious mind doesn't want you to change, doesn't want you to do more and be more, thinks you will not survive. It's very insidious. You're about to, it's saying you're about to step out and make a decision to do something different, but different, remember, different to your subconscious equals change. And change to your subconscious means you might not survive, which means potential death. And it will cause you to go into fear and confusion and overwhelm and and cause you not to make a decision in favor of growth, in favor of what you do need to do in order to get what you want and to live out your purpose in this life. So whenever you hear yourself saying something like this, you know that's a fear-based attitude. And The thing is, we are here for more life. We're here for growth. We're here for expansion. That's our creative agency at play. Spirit, source, the universe, all the energy that is infinite intelligence wants to expand, wants to grow, but it is non-form and it needs you to move through and find form in. If you do not grow, if you do not keep moving forward, if you do not step into your more life directive, you are at counter purposes to spirit, to source, to infinite intelligence, to the universe, to the way the universe works. It wants you to grow because it can only grow through you through everyone, not just you as, you know, a singular human being, but each human being is how the universe expands. So catch yourself out and make a quick decision in face of this, in face of the the noise in your head. Now, why a quick decision? So one, quick decisions bypass your subconscious getting you to stop, getting you to overthink, getting you into paralysis, getting you off track, getting you into self-sabotage. If you make a quick decision and you take action on it, you just say yes. You know it's what you want and you just say yes instead of being in a fear-based place. You bypass that programming. And, and you need to make this a habit. This is a character trait of the uber successful. They do not overthink. They have learned how to make quick decisions. You need to start practicing that immediately. This closes the gap on time. Think about it. If you take three weeks or two months to make a decision and someone else in the same field, in the same industry, makes a decision in five minutes, who's going to move their company? Who's going to move their career forward faster? It's a no brainer. The person who's willing to make a decision and experience the results of it is going to move faster and achieve their goals so much more rapidly than the person who takes two, three months, six months, two years to do that. Even three days, too long, make a quick decision. Now here's here's the rub. You may make a decision, the result of which does not lead 
immediately, keyword here, immediately to the results that you want. But here's the thing. It's moved you forward. You've gotten results. You can course correct based on those, take different action, make a new decision, keep going forward. You do that quickly and you're not thrown off the the wagon, if you will, or thrown off the horse. You just keep moving and it's fun and you don't go into a spiral, an abyss of, oh my God, I've made a mistake. Oh my God, everything's horrible and bad. I should be ashamed. I need to feel guilty. No, that's not how it works. It's just a result. And you must learn how to respond in a way that is based on the truth, which is that you know how to survive as an adult. As a kid, you didn't know how to survive. You were completely 100% reliant on your parents to, or whoever your caregivers were, to support you. But now that you're an adult, you're actually quite capable and you need to prove that to yourself by making decisions quickly based on truth, not based on fear and being able to respond to the results. And you keep doing that, right? You make that a habit. You do that again and again and again and you become unstoppable. It doesn't mean that every decision is the perfect right decision, but you learn that that is not what defines you as successful. That is not what defines you as a good person. That is not what's going to determine your success or your cash flow or your survivability. What's going to determine your success and your cash flow is making quick decisions again and again towards what you want, putting those causes into effect. Ultimately, you will get there and you'll get there faster by making your decisions faster. Okay, let's circle back to the concept of your come from. This is the energy or the attitude behind the words, behind the actions, behind the decision, behind what you're doing. So let's, what does this mean? Have you ever had the experience of someone saying something to you, but their energy being totally different and off than the words? Like someone saying, hey, so great to see you. And yet their energy is, oh, so great to see you. You know, like, what are you doing here? I wasn't expecting you for another three days, right? And and you know that they are not happy to see you. They are confused or upset to see you. But their words say something different than the energy behind what they've said. That's their come from, the energy behind it. So you can look at this in yourself with your decisions. You can say you want something, but the come from is fear. Okay. So if you're saying, let's say you want to buy something, because that's, that's generally where people get pretty, um, squirrely with decisions. So let's say you want to buy something and your desire is true. You really want that, but it's a stretch for you. It's financially a stretch for you. Is the come from based on, based in fear is the, 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 energy behind it based in fear. What would that look like? You have a strong desire, but the energy behind it is based in fear. So let's say you think you want something. You think you, you want those pair of shoes. You think you want to go on that vacation. You think that you want to um, buy something for your business and you have this fear underneath it, but it's a fear of say, jealousy or missing out or, um, that you're not good enough if you don't do this, or you need to buy that pretty pair of shoes, because if you go to the Christmas party and everyone else is dressed up and you won't be dressed up nicely, then you're, you're a loser, right? That's a, a, a wanting something with the fear behind it. That's not a healthy desire. Okay. That is not a clear and clean decision. But let's say you want those pair of shoes for the the holiday party and you love them and you think that they would be super sexy and super amazing with the dress or the outfit you're going to wear and you really like you really want it. And then you get some fear about like, well, it's a lot of money, should I buy that or um what would my husband think if he saw the credit card bill or is that too much to spend on it or Um, 
what will uh, Josie think about the red color? Those are all fear-based come froms. Even though your desire for the thing was clean. Okay. So that's what I mean by a come from. Now, what if you are using logic to make a decision? You thinking, okay, this is going to help me do X, Y, and Z in my business. It seems like it's a great thing, but it's, it's a lot of money. I, I'm using logic here. This makes sense to me. I, I understand the logic here, but I have fear behind it. So what would that look like? I want to buy X, Y, and Z, but what would other people think? Maybe my logic is off. Maybe I haven't seen all the variables. Maybe I need to think about it more. Maybe, maybe, um, if I do this, other people will judge me and you start undermining the logic. Even though the logic is based in cause and effect, this is the right cause for this effect, okay? So you want to really look at, is fear undermining the logic? You might have the best logic, but you might be driven by fears that you can't survive. Those look like, so your subconscious is not going to say, oh, you might not survive this. It's going to come in a different form, guys. Okay, fear of criticism. What is so-and-so going to say about it? Fear of rejection. Maybe my partner is going to uh, be so upset at me, he leaves me. Maybe my my parents will think poorly of me. Uh, maybe there's a fear of failure. What if I try it and I don't succeed? Or fear of success. What if I do this and it works, then I might... Um, blow all my relationships. That's a fear of success. And in all these cases, there's a fear that you're going to lose something, some sort of lack or limitation. And, and you want to pay attention to the voices in your head. What are they saying? What are the voices in your head saying? What is the authority in your head saying? And who is that authority? Where did that come from? And how do you know that that authority is speaking truth? You don't really. It's based on programming. So you have to have something better to point to on which you can base your decisions. If your decisions are based in those fear places, what will other people think, right? That that the voice in your head, the criticism, you want to really acknowledge that. That's not coming from a place of truth. That's not good logic, okay? That, that's not what should guide you forward. You must make a decision in favor of what you want and in favor of where you want to go, not based on where you are now. And many people don't get this. Many people think, oh yeah, I'll be doing, I'll make, I'll be making the same decisions that I make now when I am making six figures or a multimillionaire. That's just not the case. You would already be making six figures and be a multimillionaire if you were making those level of decisions because your decisions create the, your outcomes, okay? They determine your actions. They determine the direction you go in. And so you have to make decisions from the place you want to be, not from the place you are now. The place you are now is your current level of income, your current level of results, your current level of understanding and awareness, And fear, it might be a big part of that. Zero judgment about that, by the way. And you need to change that. You must make different decisions and you change that by making different decisions, okay? So this is how you become a master of money rather than a slave to money. You start making different decisions when faced with a money buying decision, You have to make decisions from a place of desire, want, truth, rather than based in the the sense of limitation and fear. And you want to look at whether the logic you're using is based on an outdated understanding of how the world works. Because here's one way that it's very outdated. People will say something like, I need to make the money first before I decide to do this thing, to do this business, to buy this 
thing to invest in this way. I need to make the money first. Well, you're going to stay trapped. 100%. You're going to stay, stay trapped. Now, I'm not advocating for being frivolous and going bankrupt. Okay, this is not what I'm advocating for. So don't get into a tailspin about that. But what I am saying is that the truth is that you must make the decision that you're doing something first. And then the ways and the means come in. That is the order of the universe. Go back and look at anything you created. You made the decision first and then you created it. Now, for many things, you have a sense of how to do something. But when you make a big decision, all those steps aren't entirely clear. That's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. The ways and the means come in after you make the decision. But little decisions, you have a good sense that like, oh, well, it's sort of like this over here. I know how to do that. I have more confidence in it. Bigger decisions, you decide first and then the ways and the means come in after you decide. This is how the universe works 100% of the time. So if you don't have the money for something, you need to use a different logic. The logic has to be based on truth. The truth says everything is here and it's here now if you want it, but you have to decide I am doing it. Deciding is not the same thing as hoping and wishing. Deciding is not the same thing as maybe if, if I see the money, I'll do it. No, deciding is I'm doing this come hell or high water. When you decide, then you start getting the ideas for how to create the money, whether that's, you know, earning it in your business, getting a new job, doing a second uh, business, adding another channel of income, uh, using your credit card, getting a business loan, um, asking a friend for a loan. Uh, But I love making sales. I think that's the best way to make more money. But the sales comes through the creativity. When you decide on your new financial goal, for instance, or you decide you're going to step into something, then the ways and the means come in. You get the ideas. Oh, this, this marketing initiative, or I could call this person, or how about this person, or what if we did it like this? And you raise yourself to that level. And that's super important. This is the cause and effect. The decision is the cause, the effect is the ways and the means. But most people have this backwards. And it keeps them playing at the same level over and over and over again. So look at that for yourself. Where are you doing that? Where are you saying, I can't make a decision because I don't know if it's going to work yet? And knock that off. None of that. That's not how to be unstoppable. You make the decision and you say, okay, I'm game. Here I go. I'm doing it. Okay? So if you're making money decisions, it In summary, if you're making money decisions, you want to come from desire, not from fear. Sometimes you think you want something and it's fear-based underneath. Sometimes you want something and it's not fear-based underneath. You might feel fear, but it's a clean desire, okay? And you have to be courageous in face of that. You have to step forward and decide in face of that. Okay. With that, I'm Amira Alvarez. Rock it out, be unstoppable, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hey there, my friend. Do you resonate with what you just heard? Then head over to our free resource page and get more of our good stuff, including our free Unstoppable Woman playbook and money breakthrough system. You'll find that and more at theunstoppablewoman.com slash free stuff. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.